You feel ready? Yeah. All right. First off, what is expedited freight? What is expedited freight? A company you may not know a lot about today, but you might hear a lot about down the road. We move cars. It's, uh, that's the business. That's the move. That's all we do. Expedited Freight is a brokerage and the best of the best is what we're looking for always to move our customers' vehicles from point A to point B. Hmm. Sean and Jenny, they are resilient. They are driven. They're motivated, they're smart, they're kind. I was immediately drawn to, to their story and became a fan uh, and a supporter of, of their journey. A married couple building a company together. That's awesome. Well, Sean is my husband. Jenny is my wife, and we've been working together for 11 years. Uh, he got out of the army uh, about, I want to say, 18 or 19 years ago. And he moved to Florida for, I guess, a vacation. And I was his neighbor. <laughs> and one day he just decided to come over and talk to me in my backyard. We spend every moment together and have for as long as I can remember. And it works really well. Because all the things I'm bad at, she's great at. And all the things she doesn't understand, I instantly get. So it just works. And honestly, none of this would work if it wasn't for that dynamic. You call and you talk to somebody who can actually produce a real answer for you instantly. And how we're viewed in the grand scheme of things, are we large, are we small? I, I see it that we're small, and I would, I would imagine the goal for me is to stay that way as long as possible, <clears throat> not in the sense of income, but in the sense of how we operate. That's more important to me than how much we're bringing in. So I don't view size uh, based on, you know, how much money are we making. It's more how, how, how sustainable is this uh, if we do get bigger? Can I continue to either teach people to do what I do the way that I do it, or do I need to be sitting here babysitting every one of these phone calls? The goal is to grow people. We're here based out of Tomball, just a suburb of Houston, Texas. I mean, when they're big cities, there's lots and lots of opportunity. There's a lot of dealers in Houston, and it just makes it it makes what we do a lot easier because of the amount of carriers and the amount of dealers. Bringing them all together here in Houston is, is a no-brainer. It's almost too easy. Uh, we are at my house. <laughs> our, we run our business out of our home and we have done so since we've been in business. Yeah, so I don't see the purpose in having a big, gigantic office. Uh, the extra overhead doesn't make any sense to me, so we have always worked out of my home. I don't see a time where I would need a big, fancy office ever, but that could change. Who knows? I just don't, I don't see the purpose in it. It just takes away from what I can pay my people and what I can pay the carriers. And uh, at the end of the day, everybody's here to make money, so all an office does for me is drag us down. Man, there is no average day, really. I would say uh, a base day would be like a Monday, slow and calm, just cleaning up messes from Friday and the week before, things that didn't get done, things that, uh, that need to be done, uh, kind of reorganizing the urgent list, and then uh, we move forward to a, a Wednesday, for instance, which is totally different than a Monday uh, in terms of busyness. Uh, that's waking up at six in the morning and staying in front of the computer, taking probably 150 to 250 calls uh, and not getting done until somewhere between 9.30 and 10.30 at night. Winding down a little bit, 
maybe get a shower, get something to eat. Uh, getting food in my face midday is, is difficult, very difficult. I've found that, <laughs> that uh, factor has helped out quite a bit in feeding me midday because I forget to eat. We're following Sean and Jenny because they are creating something out of nothing. They are building a business in auto transport from the ground up. And we don't get to see that very often, let alone we don't get to capture the story uh, and the lessons of what it takes. He's the go-getter. Uh, he's like the smartest person I know. I don't know if he doesn't know something, he will figure it out. He will find the answer and it will be correct. It'll be accurate to buy the books. He just has that drive. I've never met anyone like him. With respect to the industry and the people in it, I think that, I think I'm good at seeing the problem and visualizing the solution, but also being able to put it into play instantly without any downtime, just immediately running with the solution, whether it's the best one or not, and getting it done. That's really honestly where I hang my hat, is being able to solve problems quickly. You send an email to somebody and they say, hey, I've got this problem. You might not open that email for five or six you know, hours. Whereas I'm looking at it instantly. I mean, the time that I've spent sitting here, there's probably three or four that I'm neglecting, but the moment I get out of this chair, they're gonna get handled immediately. That's where I hang my hat. Oh, it's very repetitive, but it's, there's always something that pops up and it's like, uh-oh, I gotta figure out what happened here. Uh, things go wrong every day. You know, Nancy, how many things went wrong yesterday? A lot. <laughs> things go wrong all the time. If I, if I tallied up all the things that went wrong, I'd be sitting here tallying things up. My job is to make sure that they go wrong as little as possible and to mitigate the damage from the things that go wrong. If we had cars stolen, absolutely. Cars destroyed, 100%. Everybody has those problems. I've been running my trucking company for a decade. We still have those problems. These things happen. <sighs> Drivers, probably number one for everybody. Finding them, keeping them. <clears throat> uh, outside of that, you've got your normal problems. Insurance, maintenance, uh, customers, pricing, brokers, the relationship between. It's all a problem. It's all solvable problems. It's all about finding the solutions to those problems in real time without slowing anybody down, making sure everybody still gets a paycheck and making sure the wheels keep turning. The challenges that we face are good carriers. Like you'll find carriers will, I mean, I guess they will say that they can do things in a timely manner and then you'll find out real quickly who's real and who's not. So that is definitely a challenge. Unless you've worked with a carrier before, you never know who's actually running their business the right way, who really wants to get the job done, who's really a go-getter. And those are the kind of people that we're looking for. So that is a challenge on top of, you know, damages. You know, if we have damages, who's going to take responsibility for them? How do we move forward with that action? So we just make sure if they are using the app that they're given to use correctly, and they are taking those before photos, like at pickup, and then the delivery photos at delivery, they're GPS marked, which is amazing, because I know, okay, they picked this up exactly where they were supposed to, delivered it exactly where they were supposed to. In the pickup photos, there's that damage. So let me just send this to the customer and show them, hey, my, my carrier picked this car up with that damage on it, which is, that's what we wanna see. We don't wanna see a clean car at pickup and then damage at inspection. That, those are the challenges. Then we gotta figure out what happened, why it happened, and then just try to problem solve from there, reaching out to insurance companies and letting them know what happened.
It's the cost of doing business. You learn to roll with it. You deal with it. If you respect your client, you respect your customer, you respect your carrier, you all find the way to deal with that in a way that makes sure that the rightful party that is responsible pays their debt back to the person that it's owed to. That's it. If somebody were starting a brokerage, I would tell them to buy a truck. Buy a truck and run it. Make it profitable. Because the biggest gap that I've seen in this industry over the years is brokers that have no idea what the truckers are doing. I spent my entire adult life hauling cars in a truck. You're not going to find another broker that understands the cost and the time it takes to get it better than me. Just not. So if somebody was thinking about starting a brokerage from scratch, having never been in the trucking industry before, I'd tell them, stop, go buy a truck and trailer, make it work before you get in there and maybe you land somebody and you start hurting the people that you're there to try and help. Because you cannot run a brokerage firm without knowing every intricacy that is involved in hauling cars with an asset-based trucking company. It is impossible. You will fail. And if you don't fail, you're going to fail the people that you're trying to help. And then they fail. Somebody always fails. I personally would tell someone that if you're looking to start a business because you think you're going to be rich, then you're already starting off wrong. Like your main goal should be to help others know how to do their job and to do it well. And where they are successful is when you become successful. No, not at all. Because for us, for me, it's one and the same. So as far as, as far as my family life goes, the moment that I shut down um, and my kids need my attention, that's where the attention goes. So, and anybody in this industry understands that. That's just, you, if, if, a, if a carrier calls me and says, hey, my wife's given birth and they've got 50 cars dispatched to them, hey man, forget those cars. Go be with your wife. Like, this is gonna be here no matter what. These cars are gonna move or they're not gonna move. Go be with your wife. That's a thing you're never gonna get back. So I have a really, really easy way of hard stopping things when it's necessary. But for us in this house, it's, it's moving cars all the time. It doesn't negatively affect my relationships uh, with the people that I love because they know that I love to do this, so. I'm bad at uh, a lot of things. <laughs> I'm really bad at back end work, so. I'm really good at drumming up things. I'm really good at solving problems. What I'm really bad at is the back end portion of the business, which is why I've found over the years that if you're bad at something, you spend more money than what you would think you should to solve that problem. So money to me is not something that I get to keep when I make this thing work. It's something that I use to make it work better. So I just find someone that's really good at the things that I am terrible at and pay them to do it. The technology that's coming out for what we do, we've never seen as integrated as it is today. When I started hauling cars, everything was on triple carbon copy, uh, BOLs, and it was all phone calls, um, we weren't even really using emails to communicate. It was all phone calls and triple carbon copy BOL, snail mail, checks. You're waiting 15, 20 days for a check that they sent out two days after you delivered the car. Well now, man, I get somebody, I can get somebody onboarded in five minutes and then get them hooked up with SuperPay in two or three, maybe 10 minutes. And then in that same hour, they can go and pick up a load for me. I get the BOL immediately, pictures of the car pick up. They deliver it an hour later, and then boom, they get paid instantly, super pay. That, even if the market were to take a downturn and we 
didn't have nearly as many cars to move. That in and of itself makes everything flow so much smoother. So yeah, I think it's, I think everything's, everything looking forward is looking good. We just need to keep upgrading and keep up with, with the technology. We use Super Dispatch exclusively. That's not to say that I won't use a carrier that doesn't use Super Dispatch, but I tend to veer away from them more often than not. It is the easiest way to start and grow your business without having to do uh, two extra people in the back end to deal with your BOLs, your billing, your invoicing, your accounts receivable. It's all right there. It's, it's a back end office and a dispatch team all at the same time. We used Central Dispatch, and it seemed like most of the carriers we were getting from Central were either not real or weren't good. I don't know how to explain. They, they, they didn't understand what they were doing to the point where I trusted them with these cars. So we started looking for something else. I found Super Dispatch, immediately started using it, and uh, it made life 10 times easier. I think we all get to sleep about two or three hours faster than, than we used to. What keeps me going personally is my need to stay busy. If it wasn't this, it'd be something else. So I gotta be busy all the time, 24 seven. Don't have to. I feel like that's, I feel like it's, it's my purpose to just constantly be doing something. Whether it's for my kids, my company, a carrier on a Saturday night at three o'clock in the morning, it doesn't matter. There's always something to do and I can't rest until it's done. They are also very ambitious. You know, they're, they're, they're going to build a big company. They're going to figure it out. And you know, as an entrepreneur, I was drawn to that. We haven't really marketed for newer customers as hard as we should have. I think that's the next step. I think we're going to start looking for some new customers and kind of branch out a little bit more, push the boundaries and see who else needs our help. Because there's a lot of people out there that I really believe could benefit from what we do. I would like to grow expedited. I want to see how far we can take it. I want to be overwhelmed, more overwhelmed than what I am now, even though sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> uh, I'd like to grow it. I'd like to give other people an opportunity to work for us, to give people a job. I just want it to grow. Nice. Not bad.